Hello and welcome to the Snippets of Leadership podcast. Let's start from what we know based on the last four episodes. We know that creativity is not a talent. It is a way of operating. We know that nobody is born more or less creative than anyone else. The so-called creative types are simply more used to following processes that enable them to have more and better ideas. This doesn't mean that you cannot get to those same results by doing the same thing. We have seen how you can get to creative ideas quickly and well if you separate the creative process in two phases. In the first one, you generate as many ideas as you can. You go for quantity, not quality. And in the second one, you find connections between those ideas and make sense of what you have on the board. It's a great concept in theory, but you're probably thinking that bringing it to a team is a different problem. In the last couple of episodes, we've seen how this applies to group ideation and individual ideation. And in this episode, I'm going to give you two games or exercises that you can use with your team to pass these concepts on in practice and get your team used to the idea and to the concepts we've been discussing these days. The goal is to give your team a brief hands-on experience of the different steps of the creative process and of their outcomes. The first exercise is called Bears and Tigers, and it has to do with the first phase of the creative process, the divergent phase. The second one is called I Have a Problem, and it has to do with the convergent phase. I first heard Bears and Tigers explained by Dr. Barry Kudrovitz of the MIT, who has done some amazing research on creativity and humor. I encourage you to look up his TEDx talk. It's really, really incredible. So for this exercise, you will need to divide everyone in pairs. One of them will play the tiger and one of them will play the bear. Doesn't matter who is who. Then tell everyone that when you say go, the tigers will need to start listing as many reasons as they can think of for which tigers are awesome. There are four rules to this. Number one, they always need to use the same structure of the sentence. Tigers are awesome because, tigers are awesome because, etc. Number two, it doesn't need to make sense. If you can't think of anything but tigers are awesome because they fly, for the purpose of this exercise, this is perfectly fine. Number three, bears are requested to keep count of how many reasons tigers can list. And number four, when you say switch after one minute, Bears will start listing reasons for which bears are awesome, following the same rules and in the same amount of time, one minute. The goal of the game is to be able to list more reasons than the other person. What this exercise does is provide a great example of divergent thinking. You don't go for meaning, you only go for quantity, regardless of how absurd your ideas are. What you can point out to afterwards is how the first few reasons both bears and tigers were able to list were pretty common ones, like having sharp teeth or living in the jungle. Easy pickings, ideas that everyone else on the planet could easily also have, and as such, not really interesting. Once you run out of those ideas, however, you need to rapidly come up with something new, and at this point, your brain starts exploring more extreme or absurd thoughts that were not there before. The point is that if creative ideas come from connecting very far away concepts, we need to have these far away concepts down in the first place. If everyone decides to play it safe instead, in brainstorming for example because of the amount of social pressure they have, then they will only come up with easy pickings that won't give them anything to work with. And again, if people feel too silly about playing this game, remind them that making sense is not our goal. You're just going for divergence and quantity. Making sense is actually what comes in the second phase, and for that, I'll give you a second game called I Have a Problem. To play I Have a Problem, Everyone will still be in pairs. You can mix everyone up if you're doing them one after the other. Then one person will start a brief conversation saying, I have a problem. And then we'll describe the problem, which can be absolutely anything. For example, I have a problem. I forgot how to sit. Then the other person will provide an object, possibly completely unrelated to the problem. Like, I have a video camera. And at this point, 
the person with the problem will need to find a use for the object, the video camera, to solve their problem. For example, by saying, thank you, I will use the video camera to make videos of people sitting and use those to learn how to sit again. And then we repeat the cycle, inverting the roles. Again, apparently a silly game, and possibly people will be having a lot of fun doing it, but one that shows the other phase of the creative process, the one where we look at what we have available and give it meaning by associating it to something else. And of course, this process holds a much different value if you have a limited amount of conservative ideas very close to each other to play around with, or if you have a huge amount of diverse ideas at your disposal. Chances are that if you're in the second situation, you will be able to come up with something you may not have seen before. So feel free to take these exercises and try them around. The cool thing is that simply by using these exercises, you get your team to not only understand the concept behind them in practice, but also to have a sense on the type of behavior they need to adopt when needed. What you could do is simply present them as warm-ups before a meeting, and only afterwards go through the whole concepts behind them. Altogether, this should take you no more than 10-15 minutes, which is a time frame you can afford, and whose benefits you'll be reaping for quite a long while. This is the last episode in this mini-series about creative leadership. I hope you've enjoyed it. We'll be expanding on the topic in the future, but this should give you quite some material to work on for now, and a lot of concepts to think about. And by looking at creative leadership and creativity in this slide, applying these concepts, and using tools that respect and are conducive to the creative process, you can expect to multiply the quantity and the quality of ideas that you and your team are able to generate, and to become measurably faster in developing strategies, solutions, and options at will. Thank you for listening. My name is Eduardo Bindazane from EBZ Coaching. I'm a leadership and communication trainer and consultant. And if you have any questions about what you've heard in this episode, please reach out to me via LinkedIn, Facebook, or my website. I'll be answering the most interesting questions on the show. And if you know someone that will benefit from this type of content, please make sure you recommend this podcast to them. Thank you, and see you next time.